Now our next match here on Monday Night Raw. Again, like I said before, Andrade versus a man changing his narrative. I don't entirely know what that means because in all honesty, I haven't been watching Impact. It's not because I don't like Impact. It's because I've just been so behind on wrestling in general, which hopefully by the time uh, this video gets uploaded, I'll be pretty caught up on everything, so I'll know what's been going on with EC3, and I hear he's got a feud with Muse, or, uh, Muse, Jesus, Moose, Jesus, what the fuck is wrong with you? I, I just feel off today, but I'm gonna record anyway, so, it's the only time of the week I have to do it, so, anyway, former Intercontinental Champion, content, or Championship Contender, Andrade, of course, flanked by his lovely... Uh, manager and wife of Alistair Black, Zelina Vega. Oh, God bless that woman. <laughs> she's just so fucking hot. I can't help it, man. I mean, she's just, she's just so goddamn hot. There's something about Latin women, for me, depending on who you are, that it's just like, oh my God, did it just got, did it just get hot in here, or is it just me? But you know what I mean. Also, I don't really know what's been going on with Andrade, man. I don't. I mean, I watch bits and pieces of Raw here and there, but I just hear that really nothing's going on with him. I mean, last I've been hearing, and of course this will be outdated by the time this uploads, but I heard he's got a match for the, what is it, the Raw Tag Team Championships, whether or not he and uh, Angel Garza win, which personally I hate the fact that Angel Garza is not part of the Cruiserweight division at this point in time because... I thought he was really good in the cruiserweight division. I think they should have given him another opportunity at the title. Granted that he lost the title pretty quickly after he won it against uh, Jordan Devlin, which his future is pretty much up in the air. So that's just me. But hey, it is what it is. Anyway, at least at least uh, Andrade's been pretty prevalent on WWE TV over the last year, doing various being in various feuds with Ray. Humberto Carrillo, he was U.S. champion at one point in time. So, it's good to see him thriving a little bit, you know, being shown on TV a lot. Of course, his opponent, DC3, a man that I think might be one of the most underappreciated wrestlers in WWE. There was a tweet I saw before saying, you know, the term being buried is used a lot, but what wrestler do you think was truly ever buried in WWE? EC3 was at the top of that list when I was reading the comments of that tweet. And I gotta say, I gotta be honest with you, EC3 did not really get the chance to shine, and... Not for nothing, he really didn't get the ch chance to shine at NXT either. He was pretty... He had his debut match in that ladder match for the North American Championship. Had a feud against Velveteen Dream that lasted a little while. He might have had a couple of smaller feuds. I don't quite remember. And then it was moved straight on to the main roster where he would more or less be... non-existent. And since his release... Which was a release I was clamoring for because I wanted I love EC3 dude I, I I was a big fan of EC3 during his time in impact of course Naturally, I hated his guts because I found him annoying and a little bit of a pit pretty boy bitch and all that stuff But you know that was his character. He he's doing a good job But the point and you know the whole Dixie Carter situation. So obviously that has to count for something as well But yeah all in all EC3 man, he 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 was definitely one of the standouts in Impact. And then when he got signed, I was like, oh good, he gets his uh, second chance at WWE because he was prior prior released. And unfortunately, he did not get that opportunity. I actually have seen EC3 wrestle though. He did wrestle at a live event a couple of years ago in in Trenton when I went there. So that was pretty cool. I don't. Did he win or lose? I don't quite remember, but it was a pretty solid couple of minute match. And as we know, uh, Cedric Alexander needs a new contender because I don't know if I want to do Shelton Benjamin versus Cedric again. So obviously we've seen Cedric put the work in.
nice reversal there yeah so who knows maybe you know a couple wins for ec3 he might actually become whoa whoa selena vega you know i'm starting to understand something when it comes to how managers work in 2k20 whereas in 2k19 they were all overpowered i think it really depends on the manager you choose to play against like for instance um maurice is pretty prevalent lana may or may not be not so much i've, I've done tests on this so i know uh, nice reversal there. Zelina Vega is like, this is the first time I'm really playing against her in a while. So, or playing a match with her. It's... But I can see that she's probably one of the more active members of the manager roster. That's just me. Nice little... Honestly, of all the moves of EC3, is that shitty cutter that he has is just terrible. It's just absolute trash, and it fucking hurts me to look at it. Yeah, and, and, and for those of you who don't know, the reason I know this sort of manager thing, which, if you guys just casually play the game like I do, you normally wouldn't notice something like this. But, I had to do a trophy. I, wanted, I was trying to do some trophies for... I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if it was for 2K20 or if it was for other WB games like 2k18 or whatever it might have been 2k18 or 19 or one of those but all i know is there's a uh, there are um i think it was 18 now that i'm thinking about it apparently it just depends on the uh, the type of manager you have you know some managers are more prevalent in the match than others i don't know how much that's translated to 2k20 but i'd like to think due to selena vega's interference just now she might be a little bit more prevalent than other people, whereas I was playing a match against Car against Carmella as Lacey Evans, and Carmella being associated with R-Truth, you know, R-Truth is, uh, he was not really active in that match at all. So. That's a good fucking moves here from EC3, man. I really, I'm really glad he's in Impact now. I mean, I personally, I mean, of course, his time in Impact for when his first run was there it ran its course so i guess he needed a new change of scenery which is understandable but after what i've seen wb do to ec3 oh god that was a nice fucking move one two and a kick out i'm thinking that it was probably i think i'm just glad that he's back in impact really that's all it comes down to is i'm just glad he's back in impact it would be a shame for them to misuse him which it doesn't seem like they will. Granted, they've acquired a lot of top-tier free agents from WWE in recent uh, months. And or even weeks. Feels a lot longer. It feels a lot shorter than that for some reason. I didn't realize Andrade was so high up on his momentum gauge. I gotta fucking fix that. I think one big move is probably going to be enough for me to end him, but who knows? I've had uh, tougher matches throughout the course of my recording session here today, so in matches that I should have won probably 10 minutes before they actually w were won. Oh, God, this fucking bastard. Puta madre. Shit. I mean, God, that was a... Okay, I want you all to look at that. That was a straight punch to his fucking face that, like, didn't even do anything. Connect. God, this game. One. Two. Big win for EC3. He may be buried in WWE, but in EBCW, we don't bury our talent. Unless they... Unless uh, they will not win me the match. <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. Anyway... EC3, though, great job. Andrade, I mean, I mentioned burying before. I mean, Andrade, it's been a while since Andrade's won a match. I don't know. Maybe I'm burying Andrade. Uh, on pur uh, not on purpose, but by accident. Just by just pure booking decisions alone. But it is what it is. Either way, EC3 wins the match. I think this might be the first or second time he's won a match here in 2K20. I don't really recall. I know, I feel like I've... Uh, won a match with him on camera before but who knows 
Either way, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this episode. Coming up, our main event, of course. The tag team division here in on Raw is stacked. So this is going to be hard for me to even choose. I, and I won't necessarily say whoever wins this match earns a championship opportunity against the Revival. But there's an opportunity out there. And it's just a matter of who takes it. So that's going to be uh, our main event as uh, we inch closer to that. So see you guys in the next episode in our main event.